Right, so in today's video, I'm going to be giving you a little bit of an update as to how all the different lawns are looking at the moment now that we're sort of at the back end of april about to start getting into may uh, i'm going to do some just basic lawn maintenance jobs as well so nothing too major but just to give you a bit of an indication as well as to you know how the different lawns are looking why they're looking in the conditions that they are um, and yeah going from there so if we start with this lawn you can see that it might look a little bit different to the last time you saw it if you've been around on this channel over the past few weeks it's a little bit shorter uh, that's not because i want it to be a short salon that's because i've done a small renovation on this space recently and that's going to be in a video Video that I'm uploading tomorrow evening so if you want to stick around and watch that one feel free to subscribe or come back to the channel and you'll see exactly what I've done to this lawn uh, for the most part it is a rye grass lawn it's got a little bit of fescue in there because it was mainly a fescue lawn or rye fescue technically when the housing developers put this lawn in place to begin with I overseed it massively last year with rye grass rye grass has been thriving in the space and I've overseed it with rye again now i'm a little bit torn with rye at the moment and i'm going to speak about that a little bit later in the video but i want to just keep this lawn consistent at the moment so not really much going on with this one it's in a phase of renovation sort of at the moment uh, and let's have a look now at the grass verge at the front too now if i do say so myself I think this lawn looks pretty decent to be honest i mean there's the odd weed knocking about you can see there's a dandelion over there and a few others and there's a few other little bits and there's a few other weeds that i can see up close that you might not be able to see on camera but for what this lawn is i think it's perfect i think it's fine i mean it's on a grass verge that slopes away from the house so when i look out the living room window or the bedroom window i can't even see much of the lawn anyway uh, but actually from a distance it looks okay and really for a lawn like this it doesn't need to be a manicured golf green it's just got to look aesthetically pleasing now some people would say oh you got a few weeds and you need to get rid of them and i can and i'm gonna get some of that um what do you call it like, is it weed all in the the bottle the spray one to tackle some of these odd weeds possibly by next week or the week after uh, just to see if i can remove some of them or i might use a weed pulling tool to get rid of them because there's only a small handful of them anyway but for the most part it's okay now if you've been on this channel for a while you'll know that i actually overseeded this lawn with a uh, fescue grass seed recently uh, at the start of april and we have had quite a bit of germination knocking about on this space so what i'm going to do before i talk about any of the other lawns i'm going to give this a quick cut and then i'm going to get on with some fertilizer and give this space a boost of growth because we've got some lovely temperatures coming in the next week or two uh, next week gives it to be quite warm and also it you know gives it to bring a lot of rain with it as well which actually is a perfect combination at this time of year warm temperatures a bit of rain is going to help with any germination of any overseeding you're doing but also as well it's going to water in any fertilizer that i put down onto this space so yeah let's get the lawnmower let's give it a cut So there we go, not the best stripes in the world, but you know, half decent. I mean, it's on a bit of a slope, so often it is quite difficult to cut. And you might have noticed as well, I'm keeping this space a little bit longer. And the main reason for that is, you know, I don't do as much work on this lawn, really. It's not, like I said before, it's not a lawn I'm trying to manicure. Uh, and I think if I leave the grass blades just that little bit longer, when we get into the summer and we have a lot of those warm temperatures, it's gonna be able to handle that stress a little bit more it's going to be able to retain more moisture in the soil profile just because the grass will be longer the sun the sun won't be able to just bake the clay soil below so yeah let's get the uh, fertilizer so the fertilizer that i'm going with today is a 10 4 4 mix so it's got quite a lot of nitrogen in there but like i said the temperatures this week are going to be quite nice We're getting a fair bit of rain as well to help water in the fertilizer and all that nitrogen is going to promote loads of growth i think that space at the front there is going to absolutely pop it's going to look amazing once we've um, got the fertilizer down and you know we give it a week or two to do its thing so i'm going to measure out exactly how much you need on this bag it does say that you need roughly 35 grams per square meter 
Now I'm working with about 40 square meters over this side. So I'm first gonna see how much one scoop of this is gonna be. So one scoop for that is around about half a kilogram. And because I'm working with around about 40 square meters, I'm gonna get on with about three scoopfuls of this. We've got with a kilo and a half of fertilizer. And what I'll do as well, I'll put this on a quite a low setting when I go on to the actual lawn with it. And then I'll just do multiple passes. What you don't want to do is put your drop spreader on too high of a setting. And then you end up like, you know, doing like one and a half passes to half your lawn gets a lot more fertilizer than the other part. Now, this is a lawn that I've not shown you for a while. It is the one I did a really, you know, heavy renovation on, sort of at the start of April. And you can see, for the most part, it's looking okay-ish. Now, I say it's okay-ish because we do have lots of new growth knocking about. Those new little seedlings are really, really small still at the moment. But you can see, there are quite a lot of dandelions knocking about. There's a lot of weeds anyway. But what I am gonna do today is I'm gonna get on with a weed pulling tool, I'm gonna pull all of these dandelions and now that we've got some of this new growth coming through i'm going to put a little bit of fertilizer down not a really you know not a lot of fertilizer i'm just put a little bit down just to give it that boost of growth now like i said we've got some of that uh, rain with that warm weather coming this week hopefully to give it that little bit of a boost i think what's sort of held this lawn back is the fact that it has been quite a cold april for the most part we had a ridiculous amount of rain like far too much and we had like you know, well, we've had really poor temperatures too, which hasn't really given it the best start. But actually, for the most part, when I go around, there's so much germination. That's talking about obviously the new grass, uh, the existing grass has started to come through as well. So yeah, get the weed pulling tool shortly. We'll pull out some of these weeds and get on with some fertilizer too. Uh, so the tool I'm going to use is the Fiskars Exact. Uh, you can get any sort of weed pullers, but this one is quite good because it doesn't half you know grab most of that root uh, and pulls it out now these do have massive tap roots so sometimes you're not going to get the entire plant and it is going to come back but like no one is going to die i know there's someone who's going to post something in the comments as well saying oh i should have done this when i did the original overseed and you know what yeah probably should have to be honest but hindsight is a beautiful thing uh, they weren't flowering the dandelions at the time so you cannot always find every single one of them but we know what we can do now we can remove them and obviously the spaces so yeah let's get on with it There we go, that's most of the dandelions out and a few of the other weeds as well. And just for reference, that's one of the plants you can see. It's not too big on top, but look at the size of that taproot. And that's why even using a weed puller to pull these weeds out, it doesn't always completely eradicate them. To be honest, this lawn could probably do with being killed off and started again. But let's just put some fertilizer down anyway. We'll give it, let's say maybe, six weeks and see how it gets on and then we can sort of think about what other sort of decisions might need to be made for this lawn. So there we go, fertilizers down, let's give it a few weeks, let's see how it turns out and then like I said before make a decision as to what the next steps could possibly be. And in terms of the last two lawns, they're looking okay, to be honest. This one is doing fine. We fertilised it last week, so you can see it's starting to thicken up a little bit more now. Not the actual sward itself, but each individual grass plant is starting to, you know, come into its own, sort of. Uh, the space that we overseeded, we've had no germination yet, purely because, you know, the temperatures this week have just been far too low. They were lower than what was actually predicted by the weather. But like I said again, this week, because this is ryegrass, with the warmer temperatures, I'm expecting most of this to start really germinating this week. And also the lawn down at the bottom, no movement as of yet. 
And the main sort of reason for that is because, you know, it's a fescue bent lawn and those two seeds just take far longer than ryegrass to germinate. Now I've only really worked with ryegrass for the past couple of years and this is the first time giving bent fescue a crack. But at the end of the day, it's out of my hands now. It's up to nature to do its thing. Yes, the temperatures need to be warmer. The soil temperatures need to be warmer, but you know, the seed's not going anywhere now. It's sitting there, it's waiting. And as long as those temperatures pick up, like they are gonna do, like you keep saying they are gonna do this week, it's gonna start taking shape in no time. I do think it is gonna be a, a slow burner though. We're not gonna be there any time soon, but I think, you know, by the time we probably get to the back end of May, I think we're gonna be standing in front of what won't just look like a big pile of sand and soil. I think we'll be there with the lawn starting to slowly establish itself. I've got three seed pots on the go at the moment. You see over here we've got one that's just pure ryegrass and these two are bent fescue and this one has the water conserver from the lawn association as well. So I'm going to be seeing uh, obviously what sort of difference the water conserver makes but it'll be interesting to see the rates of germination between these three so I'll keep you up to date with how this is looking and something I've not mentioned recently is this space so when i did my original plan video for this lawn on the bottom tier uh, this was going to become part of the lawn however this side it doesn't really see any sun whatsoever this bit doesn't here this bit kind of does a little bit but with the height of the garage behind me it's um it's like a lost cause trying to grow anything we want to put some plants in here make a bit of a flower bed but we thought it's if it's not going to see any of the sun what's the point the plants are just going to struggle the idea was what do we do with this space and the conclusion we came to was let's just fill it with stones because i've always said i wanted to make like a little space here for the barbecue so i dug down around about half a foot across the entire space and that's half a foot lower than the actual soil and you can see we've got a ton and a half of stone which is a lot more stone than i was expecting it to be hence why it seems a little bit higher like at the front it's fine but towards the back you can see how high it is but it is going to settle because it is only on the soil. I put a layer of fabric down. I put some uh, just normal 20 mil gravel below. Put another layer of the fabric down and then got on with the Cotswold stone just so it matches the aesthetic of the garden because we've got a shed ton of Cotswold stone. And now that I know I can clean it with algon to get rid of the algae, um, we wanted to stick with it. And that's settled a little bit since we put it down. Didn't make a video on this because literally the video would have just been uh, just dumping stones down and yeah, I didn't really think it would make for much of an entertaining one, but I've got some more video ideas coming in the next few weeks. For example, the hedges up at the top, we're getting rid of all of them. They're just looking a mess. The other side's got the box blight disease now. I just think we're sort of losing the battle with those at the moment. We're gonna do something else with that space. We're still gonna keep it plant-based because I wanna make it feel more like a garden than it does currently. I want more plants, not just having grass. And stones and things knocking about and before i do sign off if you did watch any of last week's videos i talked a little bit about the lawn association how they helped me a little bit with this lawn down at the bottom and how i've actually done their lawn care course anyone who's watching these videos who's watched any of the other lawn association videos or if you've actually done the course yourself might be asking why am i still overseeding places with ryegrass up at the top i've overseeded with ryegrass and like i said at the start of this video the front lawn I've overseeded with it too. And if you know anything about the Lawn Association, they're all for native grasses like your bents and your fescues. And the reason why I've overseeded these ones with rye and not gone with bent fescue is because you can read about it and you can watch videos about this sort of stuff. But the best way to really get a handle on the differences between different types of grasses is to just do it yourself. I mean, you can do seed trays like I've done over there or seed pots, you can. But actually having a bent fescue lawn is going to teach me more about bent fescue than anything else and gives me a real feel for you know what it's like to work with these lawns from the sounds of it bent fescue is sort of easier to maintain and manage and a little bit less work allegedly but i'm only going to know that by having a lawn like that myself and i think what is going to be quite useful this year is to have a bent fescue lawn but also to have ryegrass lawns in two different places to compare 
and to look at the differences between the two. Sorry, I just wanted to change the shots up so it didn't look too monotonous over there, because I know some people say that I can ramble in these videos, which, are, you know, inevitably I've started doing again. Uh, so I thought, why not sit next to these nice dead box hedges as a little bit of a uh, background. Um, but yeah, uh, some people do say on some of my videos, they comment and mention how I'm proclaiming to be the expert or I'm trying to show people the best way to do things. And some people get overly stressed or worried about what I do to my lawns. However, you do have to remember that the channel is called Novice Gardener. I'm not hiding behind anything. It's the whole aim of this channel is to show the journey of, you know, gardening and lawn care from someone who literally had no clue to begin with. I've got an idea for the video that I'm going to be sort of doing in the next month or two, where I actually look back at this garden and what it used to look like when we first moved in, how it was just big, massive lumps of clay. And comparing it to what we've done now, not everything's worked, some things have. The patio has been amazing, you know, for the past three years. It's been perfect. The actual retaining wall, perfect. Some of the lawn stuff has been brilliant. Some of it, not so. And like I said, with the plants, I've got a flower bed over there, a raised bed, and it's doing excellent. These ones, like I said, they're not, doing as well and hopefully if you are new to lawn care you are new to gardening or you've got a new build yourself and you've got a blank canvas to work with there's a bank of videos on this channel now where you can go back and you can look at how easy is it to install your own patio or to level a clay lawn and i always find that when i do big projects there's always a moment it's usually about within the first one or two hours of starting where i think i wish i hadn't started now but it's too much of a big job or it's never going to work and in the end most things tend to fall right and seem to work in the way that I always sort of hope for them to do. So if you're in that sort of situation, you can go back, you can learn from my mistakes and see the stuff that I've done. Because there are a lot of channels out there, a lot of brilliant channels and channels that will show you how to do certain things in an excellent way. However, uh, I think what probably steps this channel apart is I am new to all this. I am not the expert at any of this. And also as well, I'm not afraid to show any of the mistakes that I do make. And I'd rather show them because it makes this channel normal. And if I make mistakes where things go terribly wrong and I can rectify them and get things looking half decent, then if I can do it, surely anyone can do it too. So ramble over. Thanks for watching today's video. If you'd like to check out any of my other videos or if you want to stick around and check out tomorrow's renovation on the front lawn, then consider subscribing. And finally, thanks for watching.